Achieving goals is really exciting to be able to see something on paper and then see it in real life. It's like, oh my gosh, I am so powerful. For this lesson, I've moved to my office and this is my happy place. Being in a space that supports creativity and energy and deep thinking invites me to open my mind to the new experiences that I want to have. At this time, I want you to think about where's a place that makes you feel center? What place can you go to to feel more connected? Find that place, get there, and let's get started on this next lesson. Committing to action is committing to yourself. Goals without actions are wishes. They are not anything that we're doing. It's what we're thinking about doing. So the action piece for some of us is really hard, but it's also the most important part. The first thing I want you to do with achieving your goals is start small. Think of baby steps you can take. Small and manageable goals leads to sustainable goals. When we have really big goals, they don't tend to stick with us. They tend to be wonderful things that we do for one or two weeks. And then week three, we're tired of it because we haven't created anything that we can do long term. So I meet tons of folks who say, my goal is to read more books. Perhaps they're thinking a book a month or a book a week, and that's a wonderful goal. But to start, you need to commit to reading a certain amount of time every day, perhaps 30 minutes before bed or 30 minutes as a part of your morning process. But there has to be these bite-sized ways that you can even get to the point of reading a book a week or a book a month. So shifting the goal to having a daily commitment will certainly help you reach the broader goal. If a habit every day is too much, it's perfectly fine. Anything that's done routinely and on schedule is the habit. So if it's every other day, that's still a habit. So really consider your needs and what you can commit to. In my goal of connecting with friends more, I may break that down into a small goal of talking to a friend for 30 minutes once a week. The next part of this that I want to talk about is how you need to change your environment, your relationships, or even your mindset to make sure that your goal is achieved. Certain places or things that we do can certainly be triggers for habits. And it's important that you consider either how you'll manage those triggers or even how you can move away from the things that trigger you so you can stick to your goal. For instance, if you're trying to cut back on your drinking and most of your social engagements are with friends at bars, it would be helpful to move those interactions to other places, maybe going to the museum, having dinner at home, meeting earlier in the day. One of the things I suggest for people who are seeking to be more active is to either sleep in your workout clothes or to have them very close to your bed. So that way you get up and you're ready. So you're creating the environment of readiness to really achieve your goal. Willpower is great when you are already sticking to a habit, when you've been committed to it, but for new habits, Willpower can be really tough, just powering through an unhealthy environment or an unhealthy situation might not work. So how do you change the things in your environment to rise up to your goal? Think about the challenges that you have, the frustration you feel, the emotions that come up when you aren't able to achieve your goal. What's contributing to it? Who's contributing to it? Those may be the things that you need to shift or change. So when I think about my goal of connecting with my friends more, it is challenging sometimes to talk to them while I'm cooking and doing these other things. So maybe I'll give them a call when I go for a walk or while I'm running errands. That way I'm in a different environment and potentially more likely to remember and consider my goal. 
One thing that I find really helpful in achieving goals is replacing one habit with another. One of the things that we struggle the most with is time. And we think that we don't have time to achieve new goals. But when we really assess what we're already doing and reallocating some of our time to these new goals, you will find more time to complete your goals. For instance, if one of your goals is to scroll less, use your phone less, it could be really beneficial to carry a book with you or carry a notebook, a crossword puzzle. Carry something with you that will distract you from the thing that you don't want to do anymore. This is a wonderful time to open your workbook and think about what habits you need to change and what swaps you can put in place to better achieve your goals. Think of the things that you're already doing that you're like, I spend too much time doing this thing. That could be an indicator that that is an area where you can cut some time and do something else. Swapping habits doesn't have to mean that you get rid of something entirely. It could mean you doing something a little bit less. So if we look at my goal with friends, perhaps swapping you know, the amount of TV that I watch, I will not give it up completely, but the amount of TV that I watch to engage more with a friend that might look like cutting back 30 minutes or starting a conversation with a friend before starting a new TV show. That's a wonderful way to swap out those habits. Next, I wanna talk about checking in on your progress with your goals. Depending on the goal, that might be weekly, It could be monthly, it could be bi-monthly, but having a regular process in place to revisit your goals ensures that you will stay on task. Part of checking in is celebrating when you're doing well. I am a huge celebrator of self, probably too much so. I definitely love to acknowledge When I've done something well, I think of it as being proud of myself. It could be as big as I'm having a few friends over to celebrate, as small as I am taking a lavender scented bath. Either way, you should be celebrating your progress. If you haven't been achieving your goals, it may be an indicator that you need to reassess. Sometimes we create goals that sound really good, but they're not for us. I've certainly like copied some goals from other people and I've tried and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't stick to this. If it was something that you really want to do, go back and think about the environment, the the habits around the goals, perhaps the people not supporting the goal, the ways in which you're not using supportive language to achieve the goal. But it's really important that you really think deeply about why you're not getting what you want. Last but definitely not least, I want to remind you to be kind to yourself during this process. Sometimes we do drop the ball and when you do, you have to practice being kind to yourself and holding yourself up. Goal achievers fail too. And when they fail, they keep going. If you have an off day or an off moment, don't quit, don't give up on yourself. Be gentle, be kind, and keep going. And really reflect on all of the things that we talked about and how they can manifest and take place in your life. I can't wait to see and hear about all of the amazing goals that you create and that you are able to stick with. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos. Thank you.